Bradford, six miles or so to the northeast of Halifax, is situated in the folds of the Pennine Mountains. This is Bradford's heart, the City Hall, situated in Market Street. Our then scenes are from the 1960s and show how, even in the space of barely a quarter of a century, changes have been very dramatic. Although the buses and cars have changed, the most noticeable changes at the crossing of Market Street and Godwin Street are the roadside signs and markings, as well as the traffic signals. These lead into Market Street itself, which has changed out of all recognition. The modern buildings on the left contrast with the old city hall, whilst the old roundabout has gone altogether. The road is now effectively the city centre bus station, and through traffic has been eliminated. As with many a focus of civic pride, the City Hall has undergone a substantial clean-up in recent years, and its Victorian features are once again in a pristine state. However, the habits of bus drivers don't seem to have changed. As these scenes record, Bradford was once the domain of trolley buses, the city having one of the largest trolley networks in the country. It was both a pioneer and a refuge, as it was the first city in Great Britain to introduce trolley buses and the last to use them, keeping them until 1972. The heart of Bradford's trolley system was in the city centre, but it was rapidly extended to serve outlying districts, the power of the electric traction being very useful on the hills which abound hereabouts. Unlike motor buses, they could draw on a central, constant power source. The trolleys have left a legacy, as seen here on the Valley Road, which was on one of their principal routes, from Bradford city centre to Saltaire, Shipley and Guiseley. It was the special, dedicated infrastructure that was to be the undoing of the trolley bus concept. In terms of everyday operating and efficiency, they were second to none. But in a rapidly changing world, when new routes were frequently required, the motorbus ruled supreme. The 1960s was an era of great change, and advances in diesel propulsion reduced the running costs of motorbuses. Most other trolley systems went in that decade, and Bradford succumbed soon after. Just before the end, motor buses were sharing the trolley's depots, but the costs of the overhead equipment were borne by the trolleys alone, so the special costs were seen as part of the case against them. It's ironic that within another decade or so, other costs were identified, most notably pollution costs, both in terms of noise and diesel emissions, that weren't included in the equation when trolley buses were so hastily eliminated. Not surprisingly, there's talk of reintroducing trolley buses at the end of the 20th century. Perhaps their time will come again. One of the problems associated with trolleys was the need to turn them, as reversing the overhead poles was a tricky and time-consuming business. Many termini were chosen because of the availability of large turning spaces, such as at Whipsey, where the wide space in the road and the trolley poles still remaining show where the trolley route once finished. Trolley poles still remain here as they serve as very effective lampposts.
The steep main road from the city centre up to Wibsey has changed substantially. But once again, the trolley poles as lampposts give a link to the past. More poles mark the end of another trolley route in Wibsey. Here, the trolleys used to turn on a triangle, with the traffic to the large housing estates beyond served by motor buses. Today, the latter carry all the traffic.